Hi, this is Mike from the Excel Trainer, and in this video, I'm going to be covering the VLOOKUP function and the HLOOKUP function. I'd like to start with giving you an example of where you would use the VLOOKUP function. What we have in this spreadsheet is a list of names, job titles, and what car somebody's driving, company car, and the salary they earn. Now, that information, the car and the salary, is based on their job title. So for example, uh, Edward, who's a technical trainer, is driving a Lexus and is earning £45,000. And that's because in this table over here, which is like our master table of benefits, anybody who's a technical trainer earns £45,000 and is given a Lexus as a company car. The benefit of this is if I choose to change the uh, technical trainer salary to 47,000, it increases the salary of anybody who is a technical trainer. Let's put that back to 45,000. If we decide that anybody who is a, a salesperson is going to get a Porsche, then it updates the car for all those people are salespeople. Let's put that back to BMW. If Jonathan moves from a junior trainer to a technical trainer, Jonathan now is uh, earning £45,000 and uh, drives a Lexus. Let's put that back. And it's automatically changed his car and salary back. So that shows you why you might want to use a VLOOKUP function. But let me show you now how to set up the VLOOKUP function. I'm going to set it up in this spreadsheet over here. So that is our, what I call a lookup table. The idea is that over here in these cells, all these cells here, we're going to have formulas. And each formula will look up the value in column B for that particular row. It will then go over to here, make its way down looking for an exact match, in which this case it would find manager, and it would pick up the salary, and that would go in there, and pick up the car model, and that would go in there. I strongly recommend that you name the range that is going to be the lookup table. It makes it easier to enter the formulas because that formula there will refer to that range there. And when you copy the formula down, you don't want it to refer to there. Copy it down again. You don't want it to refer to there. And that's what Excel will do by default. When you copy a formula, Excel retains the relationship between the cell where the formula is and the cells that are referenced in the formula. So you can either make that range F2 to H7 absolute, or you can name that range. So I'm going to name that range, and I'm going to call it um, Benefits List. So with it selected, click up in the name box, and although I'm using Excel for Mac here, it works exactly the same on Excel for Windows, and type in the name Benefits List. You can't have a space in your name, so I've typed benefits list, press enter. And that block there is now named benefits list. Over to this cell here, which is where I want to type the lookup formula, and put equals V lookup. Now there's two types of lookup. There's vertical lookup, which is V lookup, and horizontal, which is H lookup. The reason it's a vertical lookup this time is because I want it to pick the job title out and look down the column to find the match. And that's the key, down the column, vertical. So select VLOOKUP, and the first item that goes in the brackets, the first argument of the function, is um, the lookup value. So what we are looking at here, what we put in here, is the cell reference of the cell that contains one of these values here. In that case, it's that cell there. We are looking for it to go to that cell, pick up the value, and then it's going to look down this column here to find a match. 
As with any function, put a comma to separate the arguments. And the table array is the next argument. The table array is the range that contains the item that you're looking up and the possible results. In this case, the table array has to be F2 through to H7 because F2 to F7 contain the possible matches for B2 and the results will come from H2 to H7. Now I could put, as I said to you before, B2, sorry, F2 to H7, but because I named that range benefits list, I will type it benefits list. Put in a comma. The column index number. The column index number is the column within the table array where the answer is. And we know that the answer is coming from column H. Now you don't put an H in there, you put a number. And it's number three. Because in the range F, G, H, column F is one, column G is two, and column H is three. The range lookup, which is the fourth argument, is either the word true or false. Now you put false if it's an exact match that you're looking for. You put true if it's an approximate match. What I mean by that is we've got the word manager as the lookup value. We want it to look down that column. It look, always looks down the first column of the table array to find a match. And if it can't find an exact match, we want it to come back with an error. We don't want it to find an approximate match. So we don't want it to find managing director and say, yes, that's a match. If it can't find an exact match, we want it to effectively throw up a, an error. It's, a, it's a, a way of it saying, it's not a true error, it's a way of it saying, I can't find an exact match. So for that to happen, we put the word false as the fourth argument. And we get the word Mercedes, which is that correct? Yes, it is, because what it's done is it has gone to that cell there, picked up the value manager, stores that in its memory, goes over here, looks down this list until it finds a match, an exact match, stops at this point and goes across to the third column within the range F, G and H, column one, column two, column three, word Mercedes appears in that cell and that is the answer to our formula. I can now copy that down and I now have all the correct formulas. You can see that in each case it's referring to the column to the left, the cell to the left, so B9 in that one. It's referring to benefits list and that's why I named the range so I didn't have to um, use absolute. It's looking at the third column and it's looking for an exact match. Very, very similar with the salary. Equals V lookup, open brackets, look up that value. So that's what we're looking for in the range benefits list. The salary is coming from column G and in the range FGH, column G is column number two. And we're looking for an exact match. Again, we're looking for it to look for the word manager in this particular one in the first column of the range benefits list. So it's false. Manager 60,000, manager 60,000. You might wonder what happens if I don't put false, if I put true. So let's go and change that to true. I need a comma. Now as it happens, that one is correct, but let me copy this down. And what we get here is we get a few errors. That's what I was talking about before when I said errors. 
And we also get some uh, results that aren't correct. The junior trainer gets a Porsche. Well, that's not correct. That's because what we've said is we've said that we don't want it to particularly find an exact match. We want it to find an approximate match. And two things here. One, approximate match. Well, that is defined inside Excel. I can, I can give you some guidance as to what an approximate match means. And I'll give you that in the next example. But here, um, the, the main reason it's thrown up errors is because when you use the word true, it expects the values from the first column of the lookup table to be in ascending order. So if it's text entries, it has to be A to Z. If it's number entries, it has to be lowest to highest. And because they're not in ascending order, um, it's just thrown up uh, results. It looks like random results. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The word Microsoft use is unpredictable results. So I'm going to change that back to false and copy that down again. So let me now give you an example of where using uh, approximate match works. What we have here is we have a list of feedback scores for each trainer and each trainer gets a bonus based on the feedback score. Details of the bonuses are listed over here. This over here is our lookup table and it would make sense to assign it a name and that way when we enter the formula in there, it refers to that block. And when we copy the formula down to there, it will still refer to that block of cells instead of referring to that block of cells. Let's name this range feedback table. So that range is now called feedback table. Over here, I'm going to enter the formula and I'm going to use VLOOKUP again because it's looking for this value down a column, vertically down a column. So equals VLOOKUP, open brackets, and I want it to look up that value. And that value is going to be searched for down the first column of this table here, the table that I called feedback table. The column index number, or the result, the bonus, which is going in column C, is coming from the second column of the range feedback table. So column number two. And if I put false here, just to show you what happens, I should actually put true, but just to show you what happens when I put false and I copy that down. I get errors. Apart from these two, I get errors. And the reason that these two work is because what it's done is it's looked at for that value down here. It finds it and then it goes across to column number two and it picks it up as zero. And this one here, it finds the 70 there, goes across to the second column within the range E and F and picks up the 200. But here, picks up the 73, looks down, can't find a 73, and so returns an NA. And that's why we need true as the fourth argument. What true means is we want, we're happy with an approximate match. If there is an exact match, great, then it'll take it, but otherwise an approximate match. So here we've got 73. So what it does is it goes over here, looks at that, not an exact match, looks at that, not an exact match, looks at that, not an exact match, looks at that, not an exact match. But because you've used true, it's happy to find an approximate match. And as long as the values in the first column of the lookup table are in ascending order, so in this case, numerical order, what it does is it compares the 70 to the 73. And it says 73 is more than 70. So it goes on to the next one. And 80 
Well, 80 is less than 73, so it goes back up one, then goes to the second column, picks up the 200, and that's why the 200 appears in there. Likewise with the 86. It goes to there, can't find an exact match. Is it an approximate match? Can't find an exact match. Is it approximate? Can't find an exact match. Is it approximate? And so on. It's gone past the 85, sees 90, 86 is lower than 90, so it goes back, goes across to the second column, picks up the 500, and that's why it puts the 500 in there. Finally, I have an example of an H lookup, and you'd use an H lookup where the value that you're looking for will be matched with a value across a row rather than down a column. Now, just like I've done before, it would make sense to name the lookup table. So I'm going to name this one um, feedback2. And then go over to the cell where I want my uh, formula to go and put equals H lookup, open brackets. That's the item that we're looking for. The table array is feedback2. Or I could have put F3 to L4. Now this time it's the row index number. And the result is coming from the second row. Because this, this table has two rows, rows 3 and 4. So it's the result is coming from the second row. And just as I explained before, we want this to be true for the fourth argument because we are happy to find an approximate match. Copy the formula down. And so let's just take one example, Jonathan. Jonathan's 94, score of 94, so it goes to there. Looks across, keeps going until it finds either an exact match or an approximate match. So in this case, it goes past the 90 to the 100, goes back, then goes down to the second row of the table, picks up the 700, and that is why we have 700 as Jonathan's result.